Okay, so in this video, we will look at the so-called zero or factor theorem. Now here's the result. And this is a, an extremely useful result. Suppose that f of x is a polynomial and x0 is a real number. So we have the linear factor x minus x0. So x0 could be 5, could be minus 7, could be root 2, doesn't matter. But x minus this value is a factor of our polynomial f of x. So f of x is some polynomial, x0 is some real number, and x minus x0 is a factor of our polynomial f of x if and only if, right, this two double headed, this double headed arrow means if and only if f of x0 is equal to 0. And this is why we use the word 0 and factor. You see, x0 is a 0 of the polynomial f of x because f of x0 is equal to 0. And here we have x minus x0 being a factor of the polynomial. The if and only if symbol means an equivalence, a logical equivalence. So these two statements look different on the surface, but they are actually equivalent. They are either both true or both false, which means if you have one, you automatically have the other. So if x minus x0 is a factor of our polynomial, automatically f of x0 must be equal to 0. And conversely, if you can find a value that makes a polynomial equal to 0, x0, automatically x0 will give you a factor in the form of x minus x0 being a factor of the polynomial. Now, if we just look at one direction that is really obvious, suppose that x minus x0 is a factor of f of x. So if we look at this direction, we'll look at if this is true, clearly this will be true. Well, what does it mean to say x minus x0 is a factor of f of x? It means we can write f of x as x minus x0 times some other polynomial. Well, let's see if f of x0 is equal to 0 then. Then f of x0 will be equal to, now we are simply replacing x by x0 in the equation, and so we get x0 minus x0 times g of x0. But x0 minus itself is 0 times g of x0. Whatever the value of g of x0 is, multiplied by 0 gives us 0. And so we see that the left-hand side clearly implies a right-hand side. If x minus x0 is a factor of f of x, automatically f of x0 is equal to 0. What's not so obvious is the other direction. That if of f, if, sorry, if f of x0 is equal to 0, automatically x minus x0 is a factor of f of x. This one we will not prove as it is slightly more difficult, but let's consider a few examples. We'll make up a polynomial, and this is for us the direction we'll use. We will, once we deal with limits, we will have a polynomial and a zero of the polynomial, and the key to figuring out the limit will be quite simply to factor the polynomial. So we will always get, when we have a problematic limit, we'll get a free zero, and with this zero, we'll get a free factor, and this factor will allow us to figure out the limit. So let's look at a few examples. Let's take a polynomial, say f of x being x to the 4 minus 1. Can you see just by inspection a value of x that will make the equation 0? So by which value could we replace x so as to give a result of 0? Well, it should be pretty clear if we replace x by 1, we'll get 1 to the 4, which is 1, minus 1, which is 0. So clearly, f of 1 is 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. 
So your x0 here is 1. The value of x that makes the equation 0 is equal to 1, and so if we use the result, our free factor will be x minus r0. r0 is 1, and so our free factor is x minus 1. The question is though, so now we know that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x, how do we obtain the missing factor? Well think of what this means. We're saying f of x equals x to the 4 minus 1, which is equal to x minus 1 times some other polynomial. To say that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x means that f of x is equal to x minus 1 times some other polynomial. Now if you think of it, we know everything here but g of x, the missing factor. We know x to the 4 minus 1, we know x minus 1. How can we solve for g of x? Well, quite simply, we can simply divide across by x minus 1. So we'll get x to the 4 minus 1 over x minus 1 equals, well, x minus 1 over x minus 1 is 1, this cancels, and we're left with g of x. And so clearly g of x is simply x to the 4 minus 1 divided by x minus 1. But g of x is supposed to be a polynomial, not a rational function. So the question is now, how do we divide polynomials? Well, quite simply using long division. So let's divide x to the 4 minus 1 by x minus 1. So x cubed, x cubed, x to the 4 minus x cubed, we subtract and we repeat, plus x squared, we have to repeat again, one last step, and we have a remainder of 0, which means that indeed we were right. x minus 1 divides x to the 4 minus 1, and we can write here the result of our long division. And this is, of course, our missing factor. This is our g of x, right? This is the result of dividing x to the 4 minus 1 by x minus 1. So it is our missing factor. And so we get x to the 4 minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times g of x, which is x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. Now if you look though, there's something interesting here. f of 1 is equal to 0, but because 4 is an even power, f of minus 1 will give us negative 1 to the 4, which is plus 1, minus 1 is also 0. So let's see what that implies. So our polynomial is x to the 4 minus 1. And now we've just said f of minus 1 is negative 1 to the 4 minus 1. But negative 1 to the 4 is 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So we have another 0 here in negative 1. This is a value of x that makes the equation equal to 0. And so our free factor is x minus x0. So we'll get x minus x0 being negative 1, and so our free factor is x plus 1. 
And so if the result is true, x plus 1 should also be a factor of x to the 4 minus 1. Well, what's the missing factor? As we've said before, we simply had to divide, using long division, our polynomial by our free factor. I'll write the long division this time using the French method. So x to the 4 minus 1 divided by x plus 1. What times x is x to the 4? x cubed. We subtract, and we get negative x cubed, negative 1. Repeat. We subtract, repeat, one last time, negative one, we subtract and we get once again a remainder that is equal to zero, which implies once again that we were right, because the remainder is zero, indeed x plus 1 divides x to the 4 minus 1, and the missing factor is x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. And this is our conclusion. There you go. So you see, it's much more obvious to see that if you plug in 1, you get 0 or you plug in negative 1, that you also get 0, and it is to notice that x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial, and so is x plus 1. So the reason why this result is useful is it's sometimes easier by inspection to find a value of x that makes the equation 0 than to actually find the factor directly. So if you try to find a factor of a polynomial and you can't find any, by inspection, then try to find a value of x that will make the equation 0, and if you can find such a value, x minus this value will be your free factor. So that's the idea, that's why the result is useful, because finding 0 sometimes by inspection is easier than finding the factor directly. Let's do one more example. Let's cook up some random example where we have a 0 of a polynomial, and then we'll show that using long division, indeed, our free factor is indeed a factor. Suppose we wanted our 0 to be, say, negative 2. Let's take a degree 4 polynomial, and we'll actually fix it. We'll make up the first three terms at random, and then we'll fix the constant term to get a result of 0. So suppose we take f of x to be, say, x to the 4. Well, if you take the fourth power of negative 2, you get 16. So what if we do plus, say, x cubed? If you cube negative 2, you get negative 8, so you'll get negative 8. Let's go with plus, say, 5x squared. If you square negative 2, you get 4. Times 5, you get 20, so that's plus 20. Let's go with minus x. Negative negative 2 is positive 2. And now we'll fix our constant term. 16 minus 8 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 20 is 30. So as this stands, f of negative 2 is positive 30. If we want the result to be 0, we simply have to subtract 30. And now we'll get 30 minus 30, which will give us 0. And so f of x0, which is f of negative 2, is indeed equal to 0. So you say, okay, we have this degree 4 polynomial, and our 0 is negative 2. f of negative 2 is 0, and so our free factor should be x minus our 0 
that x minus negative 2 is x plus 2. Let's verify this. Because, and this is again our claim, f of negative 2 is equal to 0, we claim that x minus negative 2 being x plus 2 is a factor of this quartic polynomial. Well, let's check this using long division. And we will divide this, of course, by x plus 2. So what times x is x to the 4? x cubed. We subtract. x cubed minus x cubed, 2x cubed is negative x cubed. And we have this left over. And we repeat. The degree is 3. The degree here is 1, so 3 is bigger than 1. We have to keep going. What times x is negative x cubed? Negative x squared. Multiply out. Subtract. These two cancel. 5 negative negative 2 is plus 2, 7. So 7x squared. Negative x negative 30. Degree 2. Degree is 1. 2 is larger than 1, we have to keep going, plus 7x, multiply out, plus 14x, we subtract, these two cancel, negative x, negative 14x, is negative 15x, negative 30, the degree here is 1, the degree here is 1, 1 is equal to 1, we have to keep going. Right? We are only done when the degree here is strictly smaller than the degree here. Let's do so. What times x is negative 15x? Well, negative 15. Multiply out. Negative 15x, negative 30. We subtract and we get a remainder of 0. So indeed, x plus 2 divides our quartic polynomial. So we can write our conclusion. x to the 4 plus x cubed plus 5x squared minus x minus 30 factors as x plus 2 times this cubic polynomial. Sorry, and you can verify this again easily by multiplying these two polynomials out and verifying that you get the original polynomial. And that's it. So always keep this in mind. If you try to factor a polynomial, it is sometimes easier to look for a zero of the polynomial. If you can find a value of x that is a zero of the polynomial, x minus this value will be a factor of your polynomial and you can get the missing factor using long division. Always feel free if you're more comfortable with the French way of writing long division, use that. If you're more comfortable with the English way of writing long division, then use that, which use whichever method you're most comfortable with.